Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Alright guys, so I am waiting for the rest of my um, um, two-in-one solder tubes here. I ran out of um, the small ones. I'm going to wait till I get the big pack. So I ordered a bunch more. I'll leave the link in the description for this and for the BMSs. And, I mean the balancers, I should say. So, um, you know, I've been looking for a long time um, online or just trying to figure out a way I could come up with an idea to put something in line that will basically disconnect the battery. Okay, so these um, balancers here is exactly what it is, an active balancer, right? So if the as you're charging or discharging, um, if one of the series cells is higher than the other, it'll take that energy and put it towards the lower cell to bring that cell up to where it should be. It, essentially what it's trying to do is, is maintain a equal playing field all the way across the board and they work awesome. They work very, very well. Now, the thing is, though, is that it's not a BMS, right? It's an active balancer, right? And so here, here's my thinking process on um, this. So there is two ways to essentially, well, this is the way I'm looking at it, two ways to look at this. First, we could have a um, preset over voltage um, or we could have a over um, current, right? Now, that's where it gets tricky, right? Because I'm trying to find out a way... I can't find a product that can do it yet. First, we have to worry about the voltage. So this is a 48 volt system, right? And then um, has to be able to accommodate, say, if we're going to go with the amperage or current side of things, um, it has to be able to handle the, um, the maximum amount of current um, that's allowed. Now, there's two things here. There's so many ways that we could implement something. But what I'm trying to find is a product that I can implement. And this is where I'm having the, the roadblock, guys. So... My thinking process is like this. Okay, so my charge controllers over here to the to the right. Oh God, give me a second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Had a phone call. So, um, okay, this. So I have my charge controllers over here to the right hand side. Now, the charge controllers, the way I have them set up is they don't charge these batteries all the way to the top. I don't have it set like that. I have it set to basically charge to one volt below the top end of the battery. So what, whatever the fully charged state would be for my batteries, I have it set for one volt below that, okay? Now, that's to prevent overcharging, obviously, right? Um, now, let's say for an example that that fails, which I hope it doesn't because if it ever does, they gotta recall every single one of their charge controllers because that's the whole point of their high-end charge controllers. They're not cheap, right? So if they ever had a problem with it overcharging, and the charge controller not stopping the charge, then they got to, they're going to have to do a massive recall on all their... I mean, there's millions of these things out there, right? And they've been in, in um, play for a long time, so they're very trust, trustworthy, right? The Outback Flex Max 80 and the um, uh, Midnight Solar Charge Controller over there. Now, it does a very good, good job. But let's say, for an example, safety reasons that it fails. And now the battery keeps charging, and it goes over my maximum set point of my voltage of my batteries then i have a problem right because now my my batteries have the potential of catching fire exploding and so forth so on the voltage side of things i'm thinking okay maybe i can put a a electronic electronically controlled trigger breaker right in between my battery wires but that's where that's where the roadblock comes because you know you have basic ac breakers um, you have DIN rail AC breakers, then you have DIN rail DC breakers, and DC breakers come in all styles. Then we have what you call a disconnect switch, right? Better disconnect. So if I want to shut it off. So I'm looking for a breaker or a switch that can accommodate both, right? Over voltage and um, over current, right? And even, um, you know, lower discharge, um, um, low shut off in a sense, right? Now, I can't find anything that can accommodate the voltage that we're dealing with and the amperage, right? Now, they do sell some in some other countries, but they're like for 240 volt, but AC, right? We're dealing with DC on this side, right? The AC only happens after it goes through the charge controller and goes into the AC breakers and down the pipe down to the house, right? But the rest of all the stuff in here is all DC at this point, right? And I can't find a DC breaker that can accommodate either the voltage or the amperage and you can actually preset them to what you want. Because essentially what I want to do is 
Think about it like this. I have this Gigavac switch right here as a disconnect to disconnect the batteries completely from the system if I need to, if I need to work on something. But imagine if there was a switch similar to this or something that looked like it or whatever, but it had a sensing wire and that sensing wire is connected to a little circuit board that we could control to actually um, pop this off or on. Imagine this was just a big breaker, right? And imagine that we could just electronically preset say okay if it goes over if it hits a certain voltage it'll go ahead and and pop the breaker right so that way it disconnects the connection between those wires so you guys can see we have the red coming in then we have the red coming out right so essentially you know disconnect right now it's only manual right i can do it like this turn it off or i can hit any of my breakers but i can't find one that's electronically controlled you know um that's that's where my headache is right now it's not a big deal, obviously, right now, and I don't know if it's ever going to be a big deal, but, you know, if I'm going to implement a couple more things, that would be something I would like to implement is something that could, you know, I could preset the voltage, right? And then if for whatever reason it goes over the voltage that I have on my charge controllers and it gets close to the point of being almost fully charged or whatever, it'll go ahead and just pop the breaker and disconnect everything so that way no more power is going in and no, no more power is coming out. Right. And then also on the current or amperage side, right, you could do it on that side, too. You could figure out what the maximum amount of amperage that your home would be using or the maximum amount of amperage that would be pulling through your wires. And you could implement something like that. But I'm also having trouble finding something on the on the um, amperage side. So I'm, I'm hoping that there's a product. If you guys know there's a product out there that can do both, right, the voltage and the amperage or even just the voltage. Um, that would be very helpful. Um, leave me, give me a link or something in the description. I'd love to know what, what you guys have in mind. Because then also, if you, whatever you do here, you could also do independently on your batteries. So you, essentially, you could disconnect every individual battery if, you know, you just buy more of whatever it is. If they sell it, right, you could put one in line and then you could put one in between every battery because then if one battery, for one, whatever reason, starts to go out of whack, something crazy happens... Um, you have those presets where it'll just trigger and start, you know, popping the breakers off. That way you don't have to damage the rest of the system and it protects that one battery from moving forward, you know, per se. Now, they do, do have solenoids or a relay. Now, a relay, in my opinion, would not work because, I mean, this is my personal opinion. A relay would not work because I thought about this. Look, I do have some of these... Um, I have them on my solar hot water heating system. Essentially, I can set the voltage or I can even set like the temperature, right? And once it hits a certain temperature or voltage, it'll go ahead and send a small little 12 volt signal um, to a, um, essentially a solenoid um, to open and close for my hot water. Well, you can get a, you can get a um, relay, a heavy duty relay to do the same thing. But the problem with a relay is, is that it, it usually... It's usually in open or closed position, the relay itself. And then as soon as you energize it, it'll open or close, right? It's depending on which model you get. But it requires the power to be constant to keep it opened or closed when, you, when it's triggered. I don't really care for that because if there's an issue with the system, right? Then we have the potential problem of voltage drop or something turning off completely. And then the, the relay or the volt, or, I mean the solenoid or the relay um, re-triggering because there's not enough power to keep it closed or open and then it's basically how it was before it even triggered right that's the problem what i'm looking for is just a basic trigger i just want i don't i don't care about it turning back on because i can always manually turn it back on i'd rather have the safety feature that if the voltage or the amperage goes over a set point that i pre, i preset it'll just go ahead and trip the breaker right because the the breakers that I'm talking about is is that it's got a sensing you can put a wire into it right and it's got a um it's triggered by whatever voltage you 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 preset right and essentially if whatever happens it will just pop the breaker and there's no there's no constant power going to it because it's already popped the breaker it's you know a manual breaker that pops open and no no there's no connection anymore and then at that point it doesn't matter right because it's already been opened and you don't have to worry about the connection. And then, you know, you come out to your system and you start addressing what's happening, figure out what's going on. And then once you get whatever's fixed, um, you can go ahead and flip the breaker back on. So I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys have any ideas on breakers? I'm looking for a breaker or a disconnect switch that could be triggered 
right, with a um, voltage and or both um, current amperage. Essentially, just like any one of these breakers, right? Like one of these breakers or it has to be DC though, right? It has to be DC and it has to be able to handle the voltage and the amperage or just voltage, right? But I would like, imagine having a breaker like this. Well, this is the AC ones, but imagine having a breaker like this or whatever, or a disconnect switch that just had a little wire going into it or two wires um, that basically just read the voltage of your system. And if it got to that certain voltage that you preset, it just pops the breaker. And then, boom, you're saved, right? Because then you don't have to worry about more power going in or more power coming out because that wire, the switch has been disconnected, right? So I'm having trouble looking around for something like that because whatever, whatever I could find to work here, I could add more in line to protect every individual battery because we have all these wires coming down, right, from all these um, batteries, the big wires, right? Oh, that's another thing I should point out is whatever the breaker is or whatever, you know, what I'm speaking of, it has to be able to accommodate the big wires, right? I seen that they have the, like for 12 volt, um, but most of them are like for AC, right? And they can't accommodate the big wires. It would be kind of useless to have a big wire and then all of a sudden you have to go down to a really small wire to go into a small little breaker terminal. It doesn't make sense. And then come back out with a big wire, right? It doesn't make sense. You should be able to connect your big connector to the actual um, breaker or whatever it is. So that's the other obstacle that I'm finding. So if you guys have any ideas, um, leave some, um, you know, comments or links or whatever, because I could, I can't find it. I've looked on many websites. I've gone everywhere trying to find these things and I can't find them nowhere. I can find um, 120 volt uh, AC, but not DC, right? But even the 120 volt ones I found... The terminals for the wires to go in are small. They're not big enough to accommodate the big wires. So that's my my little roadblock. I mean, everything works fine, obviously, but, you know, just safety measures, really. Yeah. But, you know, this is part of, you know, building your own system, obviously, right? You have to overcome some of the, um, you know, the uh, the building aspect, right? You're essentially designing your own system in a sense, and so you have to figure out ways to implement certain things to make it work the way you want it to work, right? Now, obviously, my charge controllers work well, and millions of people have these charge controllers, and they all work very, very well. Uh, and, you know, I don't ever have a problem with my batteries going over the set voltage that I have my charge controller set at. Never, never had a problem. But, you know, it's nice to have a um, secondary um, backup system just in case. Because then essentially that would work more as a BMS. It's, it's just, just safety, right? Just to disconnect things from everything um, that we don't have an issue. Now, the other question I had was how did I mount um, these batteries to the wall? Now, that was a challenge for me. Uh, it was, I had to get a little unique. So I'm going to explain, I'm going to show you guys how I did this. Okay. Now don't laugh. Okay. But it works. So let me remove this panel right here. Okay. So on this one here, every battery has, um, three anchor bolts that's anchored into my wall. So if you guys look back at when I built this power shed, um, I have, uh, three quarter inch plywood behind all the drywall. Every single wall has that. All the walls have that. So no matter where I mount something, I don't have to worry about mounting into a stud because I have that three quarter inch plywood behind everything. And then the, the, the drywall on top of it, obviously. So I can screw in anywhere, right? But if you're trying to screw in anywhere, you got to make sure that you have something to screw into. Now on these Tesla batteries, there is three mounting locations. Two at the, the top where the um, water vents would go in. The, I mean, the water would go in, the coolant, essentially. And then there's one down here by the where the old BMS would be. So you guys see right here is my anchor. Now, the way I did this, because I had to make sure that I insulated the bolt because they go through the whole pack, right? And you don't want this side touching the back side because then you have a potential of a short, right? So I had to come up with an idea and... I'll show you guys. Give me a second. Let me put that back on there. Okay. So here was my first ones that I made. Now, what this is, is just an anchor bolt, right? 
and you guys can see how far it goes into my wall so it's going in pretty far it's going in essentially half the same length of the bolt and these bolts are i believe uh six six inches or eight inches somewhere around there i think six inches six or eight inches and um what i did was because when you send them through the pack um you also don't want it to mess with anything in there too right you know just whatever's in there so what i did was i had you don't laugh now guys because i had to come up with a innovative idea to mount these things so i had an old pair of rubber boots no joke an old pair of rubber boots and the rubber boot is a really thick rubber so i just started cutting them down and acting as washers right to protect the head of this from grounding out um, or touching any of the plates on the battery so that's what that is but you could find some nice big rubber washers somewhere but i had an old pair of rubber boots that i was going to throw away and I just cut them down to size. Obviously, I didn't use this one because it got a little bit too close right there, right? But this is what I did for that. But then I also went and bought um, poly tubing. Do I have any more left over? I thought I did. So I can show you guys. Poly tubing. And here's one on the ground. Let me see this one here. So I got a piece of poly tubing. These are the ones I did not use because they were too short. But essentially, I just, you know, ran the essentially homemade washer all the way to the top. And then the poly tubing, what I did is I got the poly tubing that was the size of the bolt or nut, I mean, the anchor that I'm using. And I cut them down to size. So I measured the width of the battery pack itself. That way, I knew the distance that I would need from the bottom of the washer head here. Uh, and then I cut them down to size and I put this on my drill gun and I basically just ran the tubing all the way onto the shaft. So from this point to this point is all of the poly tubing. This is to protect this also from touching. It. Essentially what I'm creating is a insulated anchor bolt, right? Because I don't want the bolt to touch anything besides holding the pack in and going into the wall. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have the insulated tubing the poly tubing that ran all the way up, right? I didn't use these obviously, but um, all the way up. That way everything is insulated. And then from here on, this is going into the wall already. So you guys can see this one right here went into the wall at one point. So this much doesn't need to be insulated because it's going into the wall, right? So we're just trying to make sure that this part right here is not touching the battery pack in any way, except for holding it into place. We just, we're just trying to prevent um, shorting or grounding or whatever it may be. And that's how I was able to um, anchor these to the wall. And the first one, I'm, these are the first ones I made that didn't work so well. And I realized that I cut the tubing too too short. Uh, and then I made new tubings and new ones and put it all together. So now they're really good. And um, I used a um, impact gun, you know, your little impact drill gun to anchor them to the wall. So they're, they're secure. I mean, you can hang on these batteries and they're not moving. Plus these batteries are super heavy by themselves already. Um, it took two people, me and someone else to come over here and, um, put this on the wall because I had, you know, nothing was here. Right. So I had, had someone help me. I had a ladder and everything in here. So that way somebody could sit underneath and help hold it on the ends to get it into the position that I needed. That way I could set the first um, anchor in and the second anchor in on the top. Right. And after that it was hanging by itself and I could set the next one and it just locks everything to the wall itself. Now, the reason I put everything up on the wall was for space saving, right? I could have put something on the ground, cleaned up my mess and did everything. And it just would have been in the way on the floor, right? This way it's up out of the way and I still have floor space to do things because I still want to clean up in here and, um, you know, make everything look good. But that's the, the essential reason why I did mount everything to the wall was for one, it's kind of neat. And then another thing was, is that it's out of the way. Plus, it's easier for me to work on. Instead of me bending over and stuff, everything is right here at my height. So I can work on wires like I do and, you know, so forth. So, yeah, so to share, someone was asking about that, and I hope that answers the question. Um, but if you've got the floor space, just, you know, figure out a, a mounting rack on the floor and you're good to go. Originally, these were going to be mounted to this wall over here. Um, but then I realized if I mounted it to this wall over here, I would have ran out. I, I could have mounted it. But the problem is if I ever wanted to mess with my charge controller, I would be right up against the battery looking at my, my numbers and all that. And I didn't want that to happen. 
And then also if I ever supposed to try to put anything over here, it was going to get a little, you know, congested. But over here, up out of the way, was plenty of room. Plus I had more room to expand on the batteries over here. Like I still got to put the one right here. So yeah, anyway guys, I don't, I don't want to keep going on here, but that's how I mounted the batteries. And um, if you guys have any suggestions on what I was talking about earlier with some type of, um, like, you know, um, voltage controlled or whatever um, breaker, um, let me know because I am been searching and searching and searching and I can't find that for nothing. And I would appreciate it if any of you guys actually have one or you guys have bought one. Send me in the right location because I want to check it out. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. See you guys on the next one.